Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, April 23rd, 2012 special meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Uh, just a quick note, if anyone's here for the planning board meeting, uh, it's in the back room there. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, please join me. Uh, roll call. Chairman Lennon? Here. Councilor Gouvenali? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Councilor Ray? Here. Councilor Sherman? Here. Councilor Sullivan? Here. And Councilor Walsh? Here. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Town Council reports and correspondence. None. Um, now is the opportunity for any citizens who are here to discuss something that is not on tonight's agenda. Seeing none. Uh, town manager's report? None. None. Okay. So, um, to open the public hearing, I'd just like to begin with a quick thanks to the many, many people who worked uh, creatively and collaboratively to put together this, what I think is an excellent, um, responsible budget. Uh, on the school side, of course, Meredith, the superintendent, uh, all the members of the school board, um, the district leadership team, all the principals, administrators, and of course, the, the teachers, faculty, and staff who come every day and work to make our schools uh, so excellent. On the municipal side, uh, I'd like to thank Mike McGovern, Deborah Lane, um, all of the municipal department heads who worked hard to uh, present their budgets in such a clear and comprehensible way and showed up at our meetings, my fellow town councilors, and the many, many people who work for our town in every capacity who come to work every day and do a great job. So to all of you, um, I'd like to extend my heartfelt thanks. So with that, uh, Frank, our finance chair, do you want to say uh, sure. just a couple quick words and then I'll open it up to public comment? Okay, I'll do that. Um, so this evening we're presenting the school and municipal budgets for public hearing. Uh, and before we open to comments, I want to make a few uh, remarks to put, to put it in perspective. Overall spending this, this year, for the year 2012-2013, is projected to increase 2.6%. This includes all spending for the town, school, county assessment, community services, and the local homestead exemption. Obviously, the two big items are the schools, representing 67% of the budget, and the town, representing 27% of the budget. Both the town and the school's uh, underlying objective in their budgets this year was to maintain existing services while constraining spending increases. In achieving this, the school had to overcome a $236,000 net reduction in revenues due to lower state and federal funding. And despite this, school spending is projected to rise <coughs> a modest 3%, reflecting payroll cost increases. On the municipal side, spending increases are also projected to be 3%, also due to payroll cost adjustments. The budget as presented reflects a change in classification of pool operations out of the municipal budget and into the community services budget. Within the constraints of spending increases, the town continued to invest in its capital stewardship program, allocating $723,000 to long-term investment needs. For community services, the local appropriation for both the pool and the service offerings is unchanged at $437,000. The net effect of these actions, along with the impact of the county assessment and the local homestead exemption, is a total tax rate increase of 4.4%, with the tax rate rising from $15.18 .15 to $15.85 in terms of the, um, the rate, and this change would produce an increase in taxes to the median $314,000 home of $210 annually. In total, five public workshops have been held for the school and town budget so far, and this evening is the opportunity for further public comment. Both the school board and the town council have voted unanimously to present these budgets to the public for hearing. So with this introduction, Sarah, we can open up the public hearing. Thank you. Any comments? And just one quick more thing. I apologize, a glaring omission. I forgot to mention Pauline, who's the engine behind all of this. Thank you so, <laughs> thank you so much. 
So uh, I will open the public hearing. Um, anyone who would like to speak, please come forward to the podium and uh, do us a favor, introduce yourself by name and your address, and then tell us what you think. Good evening, my name is Trish Brigham and I live at 34 Rockcrest Drive. Um, first, thank you for your service to the community, it is appreciated. I am here tonight to speak in support of the school budget which has been presented to you. I think the school board and district leadership team should be commended for developing a budget that seems to keep most programs intact in the face of drastically reduced state and federal funding, the most significant decrease actually in 10 years and increasing demands on schools, which must provide students with an ever-expanding array of skills from technological proficiencies to the traditional basics, and are also called upon to address complex social health, wellness, and learning challenges of students and their families. As a resident, I feel that the moderate increase in the school tax-related rate is well worth the, the investment to maintain excellence in education, a community-supported value. As has historically been the case, CAPE's increase at about 3% is lower than those in surrounding communities. Falmouth's tax increase for schools is about 5%, and that is in spite of an increase in state funding. Yarmouth is at 3.8, Cumberland 3.7, Scarborough 13. Some may argue that comparisons to other communities are not always perfect or valid, but let's face it, good schools drive real estate values. So whether a taxpayer has kids in the schools or not, being aware of what's going on in comparable communities does matter and impacts all of us in the decisions of those who choose to move to the community. I could argue that our expenditures could actually be higher for us to stay on top of our game. This budget barely maintains our capital plant, which pales in comparison to those more modern, well-kept facilities in other communities. It also does not fully fund our athletic or extracurricular programs, which are an integral part of our students' education today, both for their personal development and competitiveness in the college application process. Through my involvement with the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, I have seen the nature of the grant requests change over the years to the point where the foundation is being asked to fund programs that are in an integral part of our education and curriculum. Most recently and notably, and over several years, is the Chiwanki Outdoor Program. Since this is no longer a part of the budget, the burden for funding an entire week of instruction for our, an entire grade, sixth graders, has been offloaded to parents and private funders. The budget as it stands is not perfect, but life is full of compromises. It seems, however, to be responsible in balancing student needs and budgetary constraints. I hope that our community will join me and will support the budget that was set forth by the school board. Thank you. Thank you, Trish. I can just sign my name to that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy Lewaldi, 33 Trendy Road. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. I echo many of um, Trish's points, um, particularly the idea that we have to maintain a certain minimum not only to do what we've done well but also to move forward and I've had the pleasure of working with some of the administrators with Meredith with Trish on the committee um, charged with rewriting the vision and mission statement and I have to say personally as a parent I've been really impressed by the creativity, the energy, the cooperation, the collaboration, and I've been impressed with the desire to, as I said, build on what we do really well, but also move forward in the 21st century. And at the barest minimum, I think this increase will allow us to not only maintain what we do well, but also to move forward. And I'm really, really excited about continuing that collaboration. And I really encourage you to support the budget to really help fulfill the mission, not just of the administrators, but of the teachers, of parents, and of other volunteers that have come together to really make CAPE what it is. So I think the budget increase is modest, but it's also a sign of respect and of um, commitment to not only our students, but to our parents and to our full com community. So I encourage you to support the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Hello, my name is Dana Stanley and I'm a Cape Elizabeth resident living at uh, 10 Abaco Drive in Oakhurst. Um, thank you for providing me with the opportunity to speak this evening in favor of the proposed school budget for 2013. 
Um, I'm the father of three with one child at Pond Cove, one at Cape Elizabeth Middle, Middle School, and one at Cape Elizabeth High School. So um, I have a close-up view about what's going on throughout the Cape Elizabeth schools. Um, having reviewed the budget documents provided by uh, Superintendent Neto, I believe the proposed budget strikes the necessary balance between providing the stellar system of education that we all expect and recognizing the reality of the challenging economy. My wife and I re relocated from out of state nearly four years ago. We chose Cape Elizabeth specifically because of its reputation for, for providing the very best in public education in the state of Maine. Our high expectations have been met so far. Um, but like so many others, we didn't anticipate that the public schools like ours would have to deal with such significant losses in revenue. In the face of that challenge, CAPE educators have done an excellent job doing more with less. It's impressive that our schools have been able to maintain existing programs while avoiding layoffs. Others in the state and around the country have not met that challenge. I'm grateful to the town, the school board, and the superintendent for recognizing that the quality of life in CAPE Elizabeth goes hand in hand with the quality of its schools. It would be a grave mistake to sacrifice the quality of our children's education to realize a relatively insignificant tax savings. That said, I appreciate that the budget is sensitive to the economic climate. The increase set forth in the proposed budget is lower than in the vast majority of the districts and surrounding towns, including Yarmouth, North Yarmouth, Cumberland, Falmouth, Scarborough, South Portland, and Portland. I believe this budget strikes the necessary balance between an outstanding education system and economic reality. I urge you to support this carefully and mindfully authored school budget. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. <coughs> Hi, Dan Fishbein, Hunts Point Road. Um, it's really hard to add too much to what was already said, but I just want to add a few comments in support of the budget. Um, mostly want to thank the administration and the school board for very thoughtful planning over the past few years because this is the year where the federal stimulus funds expire and we're seeing the impact that that's having in other communities around us as was said by the other speakers with very significant potential tax increases necessary in those communities just to maintain current services because of thoughtful planning by the administration, the school board, and a very reasonable approach taken by the teachers in the current contract, we're in a position uh, to have a modest uh, tax increase of about 3% in order to maintain uh, current services. And that, again, stands in stark contrast to what's going on in some of our neighboring communities. Uh, so I think we all should uh, be appreciative that the community came together, teachers, administrators, uh, elected officials to make it possible for us to have a reasonable situation in front of us this year rather than a crisis. And I would urge uh, you and the community to support this budget. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Um, any comments from the council? As is our, pol our communication policy, we try not to make, take votes on the same night that we have public hearings to allow us to think about it and digest what we've heard and so forth. So we actually won't be voting to set this whole budget to a public vote until May. So we have no action to take tonight. No. Thank you all so much for coming uh, and speaking. and. Um, Thank you, department heads and others who came. And yes, Sarah, is there another opportunity for public comment? There is another opportunity for public comment for items not on the agenda. If anyone, but I see, I don't see anyone. So thank you so much. And next May. In a motion to adjourn May 14th. May 14th, we will um, come together in our regular town council meeting and vote on the whole budget. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor?